And then we are ready for Cordate Medical and CEO Anders Weiland. Yes. Welcome. Thank you very much. Is this audible? Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, and um, great to hear about medtech that actually can replace or complement uh, pharma solutions. Because what I'm doing here is pretty much exactly the same. Um, Cordate is a Swedish company. Um, founded on, a, on an innovation uh, at Karolinska Institute uh, way back. This is me. Uh, and yes, we are listed on NASDAQ First North. Um, so this is what I'm trying to cover during this short period of time. I can, of course, talk for weeks about this, <laughs> but I will try to limit this. Uh, first of all, I, I will actually dive into to, um, what is migraine here, because migraine is the topic. Uh, for those of you that need a refreshment. Um, and also a little bit how to estimate, because I, I will start with the money here. Um, we also have recently published uh, a subgroup analysis, um, and uh, we'll take a look at these numbers a little bit and the results, and how we target the few markets that we actually are building our proof of concept in. Plus, at the end, also, we are right in, in the midst of a... Of a right issue. So we'll just cover that quickly. So just a little bit of a refresher or maybe news for, for some. Uh, what is migraine? Uh, I think everybody knows that. If, if we do a hands up, how many have had a migraine attack during your life? Yeah, that's about right. Should be 15%. Um, how many, I shouldn't ask this, but how many are, are chronic migraineurs? And I will not ask that. Uh, but, but I will tell you, all right? <laughs> so, so I said, uh, episodic migraine, that is something that is very rare to seldom, basically. And then the faculty have drawn a line, and they say that if you have more than 15 days of headache per month, where of eight migraine episodes, then we will call you a chronic migrainer. And those of you that know someone or have had a migraine attack, you can imagine that eight migraine attacks per month. That's two per week. It's pretty tough. Well, that can't be that many that has that. Well, it is. So, uh, about 2% of any population have chronic migraine conditions. Two in 100. Um, in Sweden, we have about 200,000. And they are normally treated with regular drugs, everything from regular painkillers, um, and then up on a scale, um, heavier and heavier drugs, heavier and heavier side effects. And then we have at the end uh, the quite young um, MAPs um, uh, for, for CGRP inhibitors treatment or, or blockers. Fantastic drug, extremely expensive, but they are good. On the side, we have Botox treatment for migraine. Uh, about uh, 31 to 40 some sticks in the face and neck and head. Um, about 7 to 10% of the population on chronic migraines gets that treatment. All in all, this is a very heavy burden on, on uh, health economy. Uh, a Swedish typical chronic migraine costs the society about 120,000 crowns per year or um, $12,000. 20% is healthcare and, and drugs and other things, and then 80% is productivity loss, because you are confined to a dark, quiet room for about a day or two, and then you don't really produce much the day after. So it's, it's a big thing, and, and the World Health, Health Organization have said that this is the second or third, depending on what you read, most disabilitating condition we have. So it's, it's a big thing. Um, okay, so that's a little bit a refresher on migraine. So now over to the money. I mentioned Botox. And, and we need in our building of business models to have a benchmark of some sort. We need to know where we're going. And of course, the, the entire pharma market for migraine drugs, it's like eight, nine billion dollars. For a small company like us, that's ridiculous to compare with. But Botox treatment is very similar. So it's actually a very, very good benchmark for us. 
It's a polyclinical treatment. You have to come into clinic to do it. It takes about 30 minutes. There, are, there is some staff that, that costs, and you have to sit through a procedure. So therefore, it's pretty much equal. Botox is a strict regime of four times per year, once per quarter. And we believe that we are about at six treatments per year. We don't really know yet, but that's about what it looks like. So without any direct comparison here, <clears throat> I would say that we know the price of Botox to distributor level. That's approximately 8 billion Swedish per year for the seven major markets. If we assume an alternative that works equal or better than Botox, have about the same procedure time, have the same response or better, have the, a much less side effect profile, or none at all, as a matter of fact, then of course it would be fair to say that that would be a good benchmark. This is probably the 7%, 7 to 10% of the chronic migraine market is probably a reasonable target for us, or for that alternative. So that's a little bit about how to evaluate this in something that can be reached. And by the way, you see the little machine there. That's the controller. I'm not going to talk products here at all. But that's what it looks like. It's really cute. It's this big. OK. So this company is built to help migraine patients or help more migraine patients. We have developed a valid alternative or combination to drugs, a complement. Uh, and here is the kicker. The way we will re return money to our investors with a multiple is by selling the company. This is an exit case. And this is a straightforward strategy that we've carried since 2019. Because every shareholder, small or big, will need to have the same story. So we're not out here to be evaluated on sales or revenue. We're here to be evaluated on the value in the eye of the beholder. So how do we do that? Well, it's a very simple strategy. We have a little house or temple, if you like. The goal is the exit. The uh, foundation is the innovation, of course, and, and the technical development. Um, we're building scientific evidence, and I will talk a little bit about that. We have an IPR uh, portfolio, 71 patents in nine families in 26 countries. And what we're doing now, from here on, is that we're building a proof of concept in the market. We believe that we, in order to be successful in an exit, will have to demonstrate that we actually, in a few selected markets, can make a noticeable, measurable market share. Then we can be evaluated. That's the idea. It's pretty simple. But we like to keep it simple, basically. <coughs> OK, anyone have some oxygen here? I'm, I'm running out, actually. Um, this is the pipeline. We do studies, yeah. We, we, as a medic company, this company is kind of a little bit on its own. Uh, since the inception of this company, there has been a lot of studies made, which is good. Nowadays, it's extremely good, certainly with a new um, regulatory environment, which requires studies from medic company, and we are not used to it. So this is now we're up to our 10 studies uh, in the making. The most important one is this uh, PM007, or 007, as we call it. It actually delivered uh, the basis for a CE mark already 2019, based on an interim analysis. And to my knowledge, that's probably the first. I've, I haven't come across anyone that, that secured a CE mark <coughs> based on interim data. But we happen to do that 10 days before the change over to MDR. <laughs> that was kind of nervous. Uh, this has continued on to now. And, and um, we were uh, lucky enough to be able to, to publish a subgroup analysis of uh, two thirds of this major pivotal study for us uh, that was based on the German part. Uh, we have also have a Finnish part. Um, it's 136 patients done in nine clinics. 
And we're going to take a look on, on these data from the 007. We have a Renite study, which is another indication that CE mark that I'm not going to talk about much here. And now we're starting to more supportive, market supportive studies. Uh, one is uh, short pilots on, on CDRP non-responders. Because 30% of the patients receiving CGRP inhi inhibitor treatments don't respond. And they are taken off the reimbursement. Um, that's a very interesting group for us to study. We'll see what happens. That one starts here uh, probably next week in London. Uh, the zero one zero study is uh, the mandatory post-market surveillance study that we're doing on 200 patients uh, in four countries in, in, in Europe. Okay, so the W7 study, double-blinded uh, placebo-controlled, or sham-controlled, we should say, in, in medtech, um, gave us the CE mark, and the results from the subgroup uh, analysis were actually significant. If that would have been an interim analysis, we would have had to close the study because this was done already, much to our surprise. We have now also published that we have received the final data on the full analysis set, and um, we have also said that this confirms the subgroup data. So we are expecting a publication in the major neurology uh, magazine here uh, shortly. Uh, we presented this at something called MTIS in London, which are migraine people, and uh, huge success. This was the poster based on the abstract that, that was written on this, and uh, fantastic response, actually, especially from people believing in pharma. This is news. Um, and here you have just a glance of the results, very significant, both on clinical effect and also on response. And the response part here shows that we are equal or better than anything else from pharma. Okay, do you want to share something? Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> bringing you the oxygen, uh, okay, hopefully, that you, you were asking for. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's uh, quickly skip to... Um, this, which is our strategy going forward. We're building the proof of concept in market in our five shoes and markets. Uh, completing the scientific evidence build, that pillar. And we also have process in place for, for um, the US and China, even if we're not going to sell there. And the financing that we're doing can hang here on the wall. Definitely. Take a look. Have a look. Right. Thank you so much, Anders. Thank you. You talked here about the, the markets that you have chosen. Um, like you saw when you asked, a lot of people here have migraines. How come you have chosen these markets and not Scandinavia, for example? Well, Finland is one of them. Finland is technically not Scandinavia. I a know pet that. peeve I know of that. mine. Anyone who I've ever proofread knows that. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's a yeah. Nordic country, not a Scandinavian country. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all right, okay. So okay. the question remains, why not Scandinavia? <laughs> because Finland is better. <laughs> It has to do with um, the level of healthcare provided to migraine. Um, Save for Denmark, which has a very structured migraine uh, care program, the other two Scandinavian countries are lagging behind. And you say very clearly here that the goal is an, ex uh, an exit, and um, I'm going to ask you something you probably can't answer, but what are the time frames for this? How close are you? We have published uh, some years, uh, two to three years is the target, because then we think we're done building the shareholder value. Then you've but peaked? Peaked or leveled off, I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. This uh, rights issue that now has disappeared again, um, you are, uh, like you said, you're conducting a rights issue. Why now? We need more money. That's an excellent reason. I can't think of a better reason. <laughs> And how will you use this money? We will use it to uh, complete the third pillar uh, and a little bit of the first. So, so it's, it's basically there to uh, succeed with the proof building in these markets. 
And, and the important thing here is, and we choose in Israel, Italy, Germany, UK, and Finland. Um, the reason we'll pick those is because we find uh, that we have an easy way to, to get through. And there is, of course, in Germany, which is a very, very good market for, for headache, uh, even though it's a very difficult market by all other means, um, this could generate the proof that we need uh, because we need to have measurable market shares so that we can see that we have an effect. And if we, as a small company without any muscle whatsoever, spread our th uh, ourselves thinner than that, you wouldn't be able to, to, to detect the difference. This is the logic behind it. And then finally, as you were interrupted a little bit there, you were talking about the, uh, the conferences that you've uh, yes. partaken in. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on the response that you got when you participated? Yeah, we, we basically went to all these countries also on, on, on specific um, uh, either, either migraine, uh, neurology or pain conferences. Uh, and then, of course, this is in support of our market efforts as well. So we started to build that. We have deployed market access experts on our dime in each of these countries. They're not employed, but they are working on our hours. We do not believe distributors much, except for maybe Italy, which is an exception in this case. Um, we need to be close to the market. We need to work with KOLs, build networks, uh, work with the reimb early reimbursement solutions. Um, and, and then we need people on the ground. So this is the way we do it, virtually, basically. Uh, and these, these um, congresses were basically kickstart of that process. Fantastic response and, and very f much fun, actually. Well, if there are no other questions, I guess that is the end of our fun. So thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.